Welcome back, everyone, to the incredible world of Emacs. Uh, today, I'm going to be looking at uh, Olivetti mode. Uh, a little while back, I did a video about uh, text wrapping. I talked a little bit about how you can wrap text uh, so that it kind of flows um, down onto the next line in a soft wrap and how to do hard wrapping and things like that. And I mentioned Olivetti mode, which is a mode that, as far as I know, it allows you to center your your text in a soft wrap, kind of like um, you know, kind of like a typewriter, I guess. I think I think Olivetti's were typewriters. That's where the, I guess the name comes from. But anyway, I thought I would uh, go through the installation process and uh, maybe learn about the configurations, just kind of learn how this package works because. I've used it before briefly, but I've never really made a permanent, um, or I should say, I never actually permanently added it to my configuration. Uh, so I thought we'd uh, give it a try and see what happens. So I'm going to assume it's in the normal package managers. So let's start with a, with an Alt X here, package, uh, refresh contents. Let's reach out to the repositories and see if everything's good. Okay, package refresh. This is the normal process for installing packages. And you do a package install, and let's look up Olivetti. There it is. Let's install that. OK, so I think that was it. Let's open up a um, kind of a, a garbage org mode file. Um, if you don't know this, the little, little Linuxy thing here, or maybe a, a Unixy thing, if you create files in the temp directory, they will be uh, deleted like next time you reboot or whenever the, I guess the computer does uh, sort of a garbage, uh, uh, what would you call it? A garbage management or what, whatever the computer does, it, it will go through and um, the, the TMP directory is just like a place where you can put files that will eventually be deleted and you don't need them later. So I usually will create test files in there if I'm making a video or something, because then it keeps things clean in your home directory and whatnot. All right, so let's actually create that file. All right, we've got a new file. All right, so let's see. Let's grab some text to put in here and see if what all of Eddie mode gives us right out of the box. Uh, uh, oh, okay. There's a there's a Murray Leinster story on uh, on Project Gutenberg. I'll just grab that. Let's put some text in there like that. Okay, so I've copied this from a plain text file, so it's already been hard wrapped. But I have a function in here, I think. Yeah, it's called unfill region. Okay, so now I've I have removed the hard wrapping. Get rid of that mark too. Um, this is interesting. Uh, these uh, these paragraphs are indented. Did that happen? Let's. Let's clean it up as if this was a file we were actually working with. All right. And uh, let's let's just see what happens if we type in Olivetti mode. Well, there you go. So that wasn't much configuration there. So you can see what it did. It brought in the, the left and right margin. I have this little gutter space here, which I believe I configured. I think that's, that's in my configuration. Uh, but um, yeah, look at that. So this kind of centers your text in the page. I kind of like this. And I would imagine that you can configure how much you want this to come in, like how many characters across. Let's actually take a look at that. I wonder if I pulled up the, the documentation for Olivetti mode, Emacs minor mode. Uh -huh. So let's see. So it says set a desired text body width to automatically resize window margins to keep the text comfortably in the middle of the window. All right, that's pretty good. So it looks like you can, um, so it says text body width can be the number of characters, an integer, a fraction of the window width, a float or nil, which uses the value of fill column plus two. So I think my fill column value is 70. So this is 70 plus two. Uh, so th there's also ways to do it interactively. So you can use, it looks like the left and right brackets. Um, 
So let's see, there's Olivetti shrink and Olivetti expand. Let's see, are those functions? Yeah. Okay, so let's shrink. Body would set to 70. So you can do this with control C in the left and right brackets, it says. So let's do control C, left bracket. Ah, whoa, look at that. And then right bracket. Ah. So now I suppose if let's say you liked it like this and it says it's 54, I would suppose you could hard code that into your uh, into your configuration to to make it always come in at that width. Huh. So yeah, I kind of like that. Okay. So let's let's actually look that up here really quick. So let's see if we um, customize variable Olivetti body width. I believe that's it. Uh, yeah. So let's open that up. Okay. So it's so we can set this to an integer or a floating point. So you can be very specific here with with an integer or a floating point to get very precise about what you like. Let's read this text body width to which to a text body width to which to adjust relative margin width. If an integer set body width to that integer in columns, I would suppose columns are like characters, right? If a floating point between 0.0, .0 and 1.0 set a text body width to that fraction of the total window width, if nil, the default, use the value of fill column plus two. Hmm. Very interesting. An integer is best if you want text body width to remain constant, while a floating point is best if you want text body width to change with window width. There you go. Okay. Ah, so that's what they that's what they mean. So the floating point can be between anything between 0, 0.0 and 1. Okay. Yeah, I kind of get that. Uh, cool. Okay, so you can make it relative or you can make it specific. Hmm. So yeah, I guess the integers is the easiest way to do that. Uh, let's say we we like it at uh, you know seventy two is fine. So I probably wouldn't even change that. But um, what did I have it with in the file? I think we had it at fifty two to fifty four. No, no, seventy two. Seventy two looks pretty good. But anyway, you see how you can install that and just start configuring it to whatever you want. So that was a lot uh, was a lot easier than I thought. Very interesting package. I, I think I like this. I might might play around with this uh, because if you remember in the other video, I was talking about uh, visual line mode versus auto fill mode, and auto fill mode is nice because it can um, you know you can it can give you an exact. Uh, the exact same width every time if there's something that you like. Uh, but the downside was that it it binds you into hard wrapping with hard line breaks, whereas visual line mode allowed the text to flow like it does here to just kind of uh, go on to the, onto the next line like that, you see. So it, it's soft wrapping instead of hard wrapping. It doesn't, um, it doesn't lock you into anything because if you had to get rid of those hard line breaks, you would have to go uh, systematically and delete all of them, which would be kind of a pain. Uh, so this might be a great uh, go between between those two options. So um, yeah, I like this. I'm quite impressed. But anyway, that's it. Um, that was pretty simple. There wasn't much to to see there. So we we installed all of Eddie mode. We played around. We used the uh, shrinking and widening function to to find a, a width that we liked. And then you saw how you could hard code that by setting up a custom. Uh, or just customizing the existing variable that they offered with the package. But there you go. That's the that's the fun of Emacs. There's all these great packages out there that you can play with. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to leave it there. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.